Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the elimination portion of the tournament, the February 2018 1v1 tournament. Starting out with Zagel versus Fielthas on Trojan Hills. That is going to be a interesting match. I mean, they were fighting in the Swiss bracket as well, and I don't think we saw that. And we saw, I think, the end. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't click it as well. <laughs> One of the shorts. <laughs> games uh, anyway this is a very uh, cliffy map as you've said and you really like it yeah it's my favorite map <laughs> uh we will see spiders i'm 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 calling spiders in Segera. and felthons mm, either shields or cloakies i cannot decide I many think... many yeah sorry yeah i think that we're probably going to see possibly spiders even this map isn't bad for spiders yeah, well, us. yeah, it is possible. Um, and lots of lotuses everywhere because fleas will just destroy anything that isn't chained to the ground. Yeah, it doesn't have a lotus or a picket around. Well, um, and also wind because wind is so strong on this map. It means yeah, I think it's 1.5 in minimum. Yeah, sometimes that's a. It's not only mechs that are vulnerable, but also your entire wind economy, which is so much, you know, overdrive. Oh right, yeah, that's that is fair. That is a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we are getting into it because that's how this works. Don't know why I'm thinking that's worth saying, but yes. Starting out, Jordan Hills. Yay! Why is this over here? <laughs> so, Zagero on the south side of the map, what are they going to go for? I have no idea. Spider, spiders. I'm, I'm calling this forward? spiders. Now nah, it's Cloaky Bot. No, Cloaky. Oh, man. For that forward position, I'd no be surprised. Mirror. Yeah, it is a Cloaky Mirror. No yeah, surprises in, in there. Team, in team games, I start to air forward because, you know, it just takes less time to get an enemy. Actually, with spiders, I will start as forward as possible because then I can actually reach more of the ground fast enough. That's fair. I guess I just thought in this map you'd be in the back because then you'd have the ability to go through these hills. I go down and back up the cliff. Not worry about it. Yeah, it does offer some protection. Um... But at any rate, starting out, Segero already a little bit ahead just a little bit economically surprisingly enough very slightly but i think <laughs> oh and 400 also wanted the spiders as well so oh well at least the ghetto is managing to get a lot of glaives up early on and make things possibly difficult and going in for a quick reaver as well so if the ghetto can keep this army alive as long as it takes for the reaver to get there that's going to be effective It looks like they'll look overall just some scouting out. Sigero wants to make sure they know exactly what Fieldhouse is up to, rather than and being surprised about the their conjurer. expansions. You can see the conjurer who originally tried to go to the, to expand, now making a lot of Fieldhouse conjurer. Mm -hmm. Basically, because Sigero sent the glaive there. So even though maybe it won't kill Fieldhouse, it forced Fieldhouse to not expand to build turrets at home they, they already made cost without reaching anything and now they attack the conjurer absolutely but at this point the reaver should be up and these glaives from Segeta are being microed remarkably well and able to get rid of a wind generator maybe metal extractor yes just barely be able to get rid of the metal extractor so Segeta is getting loads of value and able to escape with two glaives alive. That was beautifully microed. And a tick is imp, sorry, yeah. is coming to the south just in time. This is going to be painful. Yeah, Fieldthos is thankfully not too far for them behind, but still, that's gotta suck. And now with the glaives coming in to follow up, really only two are needed. Although, 10 seconds, yeah, only two are needed. This is going to be cleaned up in no time. So, like, Sigero, off the bat, their attrition value is insane for this stage in the game. Like I said, the well, field thoughts, they have expansions, but still. 
I'm surprised where the river is sent. Why? Why the? I, I would have expected the river to be sent more offensively, but maybe, maybe Sigiru just wants to fortify what they have. Um, interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. They, I mean, they know that Field House is going to be aggressive. They've seen that already. They probably just figure that they, you know, they've done their damage. They've made their pushes. Don't play it risky. Because, you know, it's past the point where cheese is likely to come up. Right. Um, and also, now it's a matter of who, who does the more, you know, more expansion and the more effective. And, ooh, nice. Counter coming from Filthus with an imp on their own, so Sigaro can't quite raid as well as they would like. But still, that is not going to make up for the fact that they lost as many glazes as they did. Though Fieldhouse with a slight economic lead, which that is that's interesting. And now Feltas is sending their com just to where the Garakom is. It's another com showdown. Well, looks like Fieldhouse doesn't know it. Sigero does. Sigero's well aware that there's stuff going on. Fieldhouse, on the other hand, just now aware of this. So Sigero with a considerable information advantage. And that allows these glaives to come in. And Fieldhouse's commander, it's not upgraded yet. This is enough glaives to kill it. The Lotus is the only saving grace. And it looks like, oh, line of sight. Nice line of sight manipulation coming out oh from Sigato. Oof. Are they going to... No, they're not going to get it. Thanks to the terraform, but Excellent. still. Excellent play from both plays, actually. Like, Sigato did very nice micro. But essentially, burying yourself is sometimes the right way to keep yourself alive. So you're okay. <laughs> Barry K. <laughs> but the Lotus up first. Build off his commander. Should be able to upgrade that. This is going to be a Lotus stalemate for however long it takes for reinforcements to get in here. Which is actually in Sigero's advantage. Sigero has a slight expansion advantage on Fieldhouse. And well, actually no. This is... The reinforcements came in. See, Fieldhouse should have an easier time holding this upper section, or at least managing to set up a bit of a contain. But at the same time, all these reavers in the bottom are going to make it way harder for that to be maintained than you'd otherwise expect. I think that Sigera, you know, controlling the heels and all, it's really... This is what's going to decide this game. Economy. And at this point, the 5 metal per second lead, Sigero does have enough enough advantage to have some boldness, but not so much that Fieldhouse can't make their life miserable. Like, Sigero still has to be somewhat careful, but the forces they have so far, the Ronin are going to be causing some issues, but the Reavers should be able to take at least enough territory that Sigero can get both hills and hold them. Felthas is actually a bit stalling at the moment. Oh, Both so they are. are. Oh, and not only that, Felthas, their commander is down! And with that, 500 metal vanishes into the ether. Because no storage is available oh. for that, and I think that might... If this fight doesn't go well in the center of the map, that might just break Felthas. That might be the game. They feel as the economy's gone down. They've lost their commander. They have, they lost a bunch of metal. They could have gone to units, and if they don't hold this, they've got nothing. It just Sigero could march all over them. And yeah, Sigero will march. Yeah, this is over. That was a nice and close game up until the end. That, I mean, Sigero came in, had a slightly stronger economy, turned that into a bunch of metal, and also slightly stronger information setup, allowing them to deal with the commander more effectively knowing that Fieldhouse had the commander coming up. And that just left very little room for Fieldhouse to do much. Not to mention the early micro wins. Like that imp in the bottom, and the glaives coming from Sigero that were able to just Definitely. rip apart everything. Definitely. It's just containing your enemy, microing well. Like, very, very impressive play from Sigero. Although, to be honest, Fieldhouse also did very nicely. Oh yeah, they did. That was nothing to be ashamed of there. The last little bit tore him apart, but yeah, like I said, it was totally winnable. The loss of the commander was the biggest blow. 
it was a match worthy of being in the quarterfinal and even more. Yeah, at this point, I think we have the, I think we have the loser semifinals that are also going because I, because I'm pretty sure that Google Frog and Wes are still at it. But let's just, yeah, they are. Okay, so let's just go over to that and see what's happening there. All right, so well, let's see. Maybe it was someone that one of them went for spiders. One can only hope. Oh, uh, there we go. Because I mean, we all want to see spiders, don't we? I mean, Sigeto spiders would have been better, but Sigeto did win with the cloaky. However, we're into this match. Wes and Google Frog also going for Cloaky Mirror, and Google Frog going a very rapid expansion in the back line. This is something we didn't see last game at all, were these backyard expansions. They were not taken. Everything was forward in the last game. This game, far more in the back. Wes taking one of the hills, Google Frog contesting the other one, and able to hold on to it long enough. However, Wes, with a 12 medal advantage right by the 5 minute mark, getting somewhat torn apart by Google Frog over to the north, but at the same time getting revenge over to the south, and that again maintains the massive economic lead that Wes has managed to take. Those hills, the mechs is near the hills, losing the back is a small blow, but it's nothing compared to what Google Frog doesn't have. Now, one thing, one thing looks like he's going here, that Wes should be able to get some damage from the main base, but Google Frog finally managing to find some room to get back in the center and hold that effectively enough to at least maintain themselves into an okay mid-game position. Not a great mid-game position, but they can take care of these glaives and retake the expansion over to the south, possibly take the hill expansion. There is an option there and also get some reclaim off of their opponent's metal. But that is going to be... That's still going to be a tough situation. West still ahead economically. Google Frog has to win these fights without too much attrition, and... That's actually happening pretty well. Google Frog with a 2,000 metal attrition lead. As as we get in fully caught up. Actually, what is the... What is the unit value difference here? Still a 4,000 metal unit value difference, but the attrition is working out in Google Frog's favor. Now, at any rate, we do have an expansion being rebuilt. The south has been rebuilt. The southeast looks like it's going to be built up fairly soon. There's a contained attempt by West, but that's not... I'm not sure how relevant that is compared to how much West is naked expanded, and Google Frog can take advantage of the nakedness of those expansions on top of their so attrition. So much naked expansion. So much naked expansion. It's I mean, really it was amazing. working. It yeah, was it's, worth it's definitely it. definitely working. Yeah. It's just... The punish is coming in now, and it might be enough. I mean, like I said, Google Frog's still behind 5k metal in terms of unit value, but they are attriting, they're handling attrition extremely well. Like, Google Frog's being very efficient with this, and now they're able to take out all the economy, and nothing is stopping them. Wes could fall. They didn't turn that economy into a win early enough, and now they're going to be playing at parity with Google Frog. Well, that being said, Google Frog does not have the energy to make that work. They need, they're gonna, they're gonna need more metal or more power plants. Just, just how it goes right now. Hmm. Google Frog has no E for the reclaim. Yeah, that's exactly it. Looks like yeah, they're starting to sad. rebuild. No, not even. Darn, if it were, yes. weren't for that, they'd have this. And they are getting a bit of energy, but it's frontline energy. They don't have a whole lot of workers in the back, and that's... It's not helping. I mean, one of them is... They do have a conjurer in the back, but it's not enough to build up a bunch of energy to allow them to get that reclaim to make it work, because there's a lot of reclaim in the center. Like, it's one caretaker has 2,000 yeah. metal inside of its range. Like, that's... Well, I mean, that's another... That's possibly parity for the next next minute or two. But it's not happening, not today, not from the looks of it. Even with the attrition working out, there's still a 5,000 metal difference. The attrition is making that a 5,000 metal difference instead of a 10,000 metal difference. 
but it's still a significant difference. And the attrition game is no longer what's being played. It looks like Google Frog. And they're getting their main base attack directly. And they're getting their main base attack directly in a way that's not easily defensible. So, really, Google Frog, they haven't got a whole lot to hold on to. And Wes is just going to be able to slowly but surely grind them into the ground. Well, there's isn't much to say about this. No. So much going on, but um, yeah. And now we hold the hammers as things. They have names, yes. That's yes, they have names. And that is still that is still a sling now. That is no longer a hammer. Mm -hmm. I guess because hammers. Makes sense, actually. Yeah, it throwing make things. More sense. Yeah, I I don't throw that many hammers nowadays. That's good. Throwing hammers is dangerous. You might hurt somebody. Right, right. Um. But yeah, I think Google Frog is really. Google Frog's not really doing badly considering the economic disadvantage. Like, I'm actually quite impressed yeah. by how well they managed to hold on to this in this front line with the reclaim as much as they've been assaulted. And it's, it is building up, and they are keeping their forces alive. Their attrition is going up. It's just that at the same time, Wes's economy is way higher. Like, it's only if it's Google Frog manages that. to maintain this metal the economy that they even have on top of the attrition that they could even come close to equalizing unit value. And that's assuming they don't have to split up too much for anti -air. Because all that West needs to do is not, is not really keep good attrition. It's keeping Google occupied in the center while you know, okay, not on the, on the center, keeping Google occupied everywhere. Like, when uh, Google Frog wasn't occupied, uh, they raided all the naked expansion. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when your enemy has the initiative. And at this point, it looks like Google Frog may still have that with all the harpies being built up and not a whole lot of anti-air to respond to them. They could go back and raid the naked expansions again once they've gotten rid of the harpies in their back line. Of course, the problem is that's exactly what Wesley's doing, getting rid of the naked expansions over that Google Frog has. Or at least harassing them a little bit. Maybe not getting rid of them yet. Not able to completely destroy them. But still able to heavily damage them. Although, oh, a crow. Hey, it's a crow in a tournament match. A crow. <laughs> Wes wants this yes. match over with. And they're correct to want it to be over. Everything. I mean, I agree. <laughs> it's, it's, I, yeah. like, I like that they're using a crow. It should end the match. Like, Google Frog, being as far behind as they are, I think they've been able to stay alive due to really intelligent use of defenses and good unit counters, but unless they have enough anti to deal with that crow, and they don't, they're... No, not a chance. Yeah, they're, they're basically done. Now they've lost the, the backline expansion. There's nothing else left. Two factories are going to disappear. And that's the thing, too, is that I think big reason West had that, or Google Frog had the opportunity is because West was investing so much into this crow. Now that we're seeing everything invested into glaives, now it's really turning around. The crow is going to break things open. And if that doesn't end the game, then the glaive army certainly will. How many glaives are there? The 30 glaives and counting certainly will. It's a new glaive every three or four seconds. Or every three seconds. I will call it 20-something uh, <laughs> glaives. Yeah, and no, 20 is a magic number. Twenty, two, yeah. two of them, two 20s of glaives. Two 20s of glaives. It is a base-breaking amount. Exactly Actually, what how is Google Fog still... I mean, okay. I guess they have the commander, but that's it. The Google Fog throwing in the towel, realizing they haven't got much left. But hey, valiant effort for how long they were in the back like that. Surprisingly Definitely. managing... Like, they lost and got the Complete Annihilation Award. <laughs> when does that ever happen? It's... it's kind of... It does happen exactly in this time where Wesley didn't even try to conserve their units. No just, kidding. Just where Google froze down. You can do it when you have the metal. You can just wear the enemy down. 
Well, well done. So Wes is going to be fighting against Fieldthos in the lower bracket finals, in the losers finals. And Google Frog, well, they got fourth place, which is respectable. Definitely. Now, at this point, we have... I don't know if the bracket's going to be updated for this, because this is not challenge, so... Yeah, it's a little bit wonky. But if it is updated, then at least we can show... No, not yet. Okay, whatever. It'll be updated eventually. So the next match is going to be Fieldthos and Wesley. 